So when it comes to the point of wanting to go and install the helical piles, do you test the soil beforehand or is it sort of like you, you bring the piles to the location, you, you screw in and you hope for the best? So that's a good question. So 99% of the time when it's a large project, there's always a soil test done. And chances are it's already been done before we're even involved in the project. Because there's a lot of risk, it's a huge project. We, they have to know exactly what's in the soil so they can, so they can uh, modify their design accordingly. Now, when it's a smaller project, for instance, when it's a deck, it's not practical to have an expensive soil test done every time you have a small deck. It just, it, it's impractical. So by design, a helical pile is its own soil test. So as you install the pile, from the resistance we get as we install the pile, we know the soil we're dealing with. So using the measuring equipment on our excavator as we install, we mark the pile at every foot, and we write down our torque, our resistance results as we install the pile. So for instance, at one foot, we had 750 foot-pounds of torque of resistance. At two feet, we had 1,050 foot-pounds of torque resistance. At three feet, we had 1,400. And finally, we had 1,750. Final. By knowing the size of the tube and the size of the helix and the resistance torque as we installed the pile, we can deduce, we, can, we know exactly the composition of this soil and the capacity of the pile at each foot. So for instance, if this were for a given specific pile, from here we look at our installation chart, we know that at 750 foot-pounds, this pile can hold 1,500 pounds of compression load. At 1,500, perhaps, it could hold 2,100 pounds. At 1,400, it would be up to 2,700 pounds of compression load. All the way here, when we know this will hold 5,000 pounds of compression load. And that was called for in our plans. So we're, we're, we know we're well within our spec to support our project. 